Previously on Jimmy Kimmel Live. A Warren County, New Jersey Police Department is now in touch with contractors and planning security upgrades after police say a man intentionally drove his car into the station. Luckily, no one was injured. While this video doesn't have sound, the Warren County prosecutor says the driver had run into the jungle by Guns N' Roses blasting from his car as he put up his hands in a celebratory manner. From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live. Tonight, one the sight. Cassidy Hutchinson, and music from Blaney with Guido and the Quito. And now, Jimmy Kimmel! A very holy day of guacamole here in the United States. It is National Taco Day today, which is, um, why would they have Taco Day on Wednesday? Isn't Tuesday the Taco Day? Yeah, Taco Tuesday, yeah. Everything is so screwed up. I mean, did you get that text from the emergency alert system uh, today? The federal government let everyone know our phones would be getting an alert message at 2.20 Eastern, 11.20 our time today. Everyone's phones made a terrible noise all at once, and because, of course, because everyone's crazy now, the conspiracy goblins were out in full force <laughs> warning anyone who'll listen that this is all part of the globalist plan to mutate us when the vaccines get hit with 5G. Different pathogens can be released by different frequencies pulsed through the 5G network. If you got the shots, the odds are, according to U.S. law, that you are owned by the patent holders. You're a new species called Homo borgenesis. The worst case scenario is it activates people and makes them aggressive, and we see the Hutus and the Tutsis recreated in America. And there's actually worse parts to it than that, including the 1P36 gene deletion that effectively will turn those poor people into zombies. Into zombies. We got, I get the phones are going to turn us into zombies. Our phones already turned us into zombies, OK? <laughs> And by the way, zombies eat brains, so none of you guys have anything to worry about. It's... <laughs> but if you were concerned that your phone would somehow uh, trigger a zombie transformation, there was a simple thing you could do to prevent it. First, it's important you both turn off your phones and your laptops and put them in, in, in um, Faraday bags, right? Because theoretically, a battery or, powered or the thing... microwave. Or your microwave. Well, yeah. Don't turn the microwave on, but in the microwave, because that is a Faraday cage in itself. Yes, yes, yes. Turn the, definitely turn the microwave on. <laughs> stick your phone in it and put it on the popcorn setting for 18 minutes. <laughs> Try to squeeze your head in there, too. It's, I mean, OK, well, so let's, let's just break this down for a second, because so these nuts think this is a conspiracy and whatever. If this was a conspiracy to turn us into zombies, why would the government announce it in advance? Just let you know, zombie time is 2.20 Eastern <laughs> on Wednesday. And in the old days, people like your dad or your uncle would think these people were, were crazy. But now, you even see this stuff on the allegedly mainstream news channels. Season two of Triple Confidential is back. 5G technology. Is it the reason your grandson is a gay? We dial in on your ISP's LIEs. In 5G, the G may stand for gay. Some say Bill Gates and Oprah are Antifa vampire lizards who secretly own all the world's fresh water. Facebook memes suggest they're poisoning it with fluoride to make you enjoy rap music. What are they hiding? Jews. We all know they caused Hurricane Katrina, but what are they planning with their space lasers? Eight planets, eight nights of Hanukkah. That adds up to 16. The same number of letters in Barbara Streisand's name if you add an extra A right here. Will Yentl go mental and blow up the cosmos? Learn more on Hanukkah Festival of Frights. Triple Confidential on Fox Nation. Hosted by JFK Jr. and Sasquatch. <laughs> Well, they're a good team. Um, speaking of crazy, are you following the, the goings on in Congress? We got a new episode of The House Floor is Lava last night. The search is now on for a new speaker after the MAGA monkeys kicked out Kevin McCarthy. 
The ins and outs of how it happened are they're complicated. Basically, Kevin McCarthy went through the political equivalent of getting pants in front of the whole school <laughs> and then having a squirrel bite you on the penis. It's, McCarthy was ousted by the lunatic fringe of his own party. It's first time ever in the history of this country a speaker has been removed. So now they need a new speaker. And the Klan mom, Marjorie Taylor Greene, has a great idea. She thinks it should be Donald Trump. We want him back as president, so why not make him Speaker of the House, even if it's an interim speaker, while we work to find another speaker? Anyone that wants to run for speaker, the only way to earn my vote is to beat President Trump. He's never going to have sex with you, Marge. He's stopping. <laughs> He's a married man. You know, <laughs> as nutty as it sounds, the Constitution does not require that the Speaker of the House be a member of Congress. Technically, any American can be the Speaker. And according to Sean Hannity, Trump might be into this idea. Sources telling me at this hour some House Republicans have been in contact with and have started an effort to draft former President Donald Trump to be the next Speaker. And I have been told uh, that uh, President Trump might be open to helping the Republican Party, at least in the short term. Did he say draft? I don't, you don't use the word draft. In, <laughs> it gives Trump bone spurs. But can you imagine this? Like, there isn't enough insanity in the House right now. They want to bring in Donald Trump to come settle things down. The man has 91 felony counts against him. And he's in the middle of a $250 million fraud trial in New York. But that doesn't mean he isn't considering the job. Did you take the job? A lot of people have asked me about it. I'm focused. You know, we're leading. I don't know you. I'm sure you don't read too much in the papers. But we're leading by like 50 points for president. You know, my focus is totally on that. If I can help them during the process, I would do it. The same guy who sent hundreds of dangerous imbeciles to poop on the floor of that same building wants to help them through the process. Although, I guess in some ways it makes sense. Republicans need a speaker, and the way things are going right now in court, Pretty soon, Trump might need a house, so... Um, <laughs> meanwhile, Rudy Giuliani is back at the center of uh, Trump investigation. Count Druncula is said to be in the crosshairs of special counsel Jack Smith. Federal prosecutors have reportedly been looking into Rudy's drinking. They want to know, was Giuliani drunk when he told the president to fight the election results? Did Trump know Giuliani was drunk? And um, who threw up all over Mike Pence's dockers? <laughs> There's a big story in the New York Times today about Giuliani's drinking. He strongly denies that he is an alcoholic, even though you can clearly see there's an espresso <laughs> martini leaking out of his head. But I have to say that I was thinking about Giuliani and the saddest thing about it is, if they weren't on opposite sides of the fence, Rudy and Hunter Biden would probably have a really good time together. <laughs> As you know, the writer's strike is over, but not only are members of the actors' union still out on the picket line, today more than 75,000 employees of Kaiser Permanente walked off the job as well. It's the largest healthcare strike in American history, which is uh, very bad news for anybody they left in the MRI machine. But Kaiser employees... <laughs> are fighting for better pay, which they deserve, better benefits. Um, they're looking for, they want hospital gowns that actually cover their patients' hideous butts. And <laughs> the striking employees include nursing staff, receptionists, pharmacists, and optometrists who, optometrists must make great picketers. Which middle finger looks clearer, this one? <laughs> or this? The writer's strike lasted 148 days, which was a very long time for us to be out. It went on so long, Guillermo and I actually started looking at fallback careers, right? Yes, that's right, Jimmy, yes. Do you remember what we did? Yes, give me the cooking. Yes, we went through the want ads, <laughs> and we found a line of work called cooking that seemed to be fun and delicious. Hi, welcome to Benihana. My name is Tats. I'm a Tepan chef. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having us. This is Guillermo. Hi. I'm Jimmy. You are going to instruct us in the ways of the Benihana chef. Yes, rule number one, please don't cut yourself. Don't cut yourself. Okay, okay that's good. I was planning to do that. Yes. Okay. Rule number two, as you see, the grill is hot. Don't touch that either. Don't touch that, please. Okay. okay. First things, uh, we have to introduce ourselves for the guests. We will say konnichiwa. Konnichiwa, uh, yeah. Good afternoon. Yeah, okay. Konnichiwa. Yeah. And you're going to cross arm and then bend it. Three seconds. Okay. 
know, Japanese people, we, use, we bend each other, you know. For... You bend each other? Yeah. That's why there are so oh, many, okay. yeah. Oh. Right. Oh. 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 Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Next step, we're going to serve the sauces. One time I was at a Benihana and I saw Rick Springfield sitting at another table. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's my Benihana story. You know Rick Springfield, right? He did the song Jesse's Girl. You know that song? I'm sorry. You know that song? Yeah, I know. Jesse's, Jesse's a friend? Yeah. He wanted to steal Jesse's girlfriend from his friend because she was so attractive to him. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I saw him at a Benihana. You ever served him? No, I don't. No. Okay. Huh? All right, great. You have to impress our guests, right? So please practice. Simple. One, flip, right? And catch. And you can make some noise a little bit, you know? Nice noise. I'll make noise. Let's start with fried rice, okay? We have egg. Right. Do you like a Japanese egg roll? Yeah. Egg roll, this is a Japanese egg roll. And do people laugh when you do that? Yeah, you should laugh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what a great joke. Yeah. All right, something here, right? right. I'm going to cook with this, right? OK. And top a couple things. Right. And now they disappear? So, oh, my god. Oh, oh, wow, it's like magic. Wow, magic. Oh. You give the egg a spin, you go like, all right, there we go. And look at that. How many eggs are in there? Oh, I got it right here. <laughs> now listen, I know you got a book full of jokes, right? <laughs> okay. That the chefs use. This is like the Benny Ha Ha Chef Guide for jokes. <laughs> when someone's cell phone rings, pretend to use the shaker to answer. Hello, hello. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's oh. good. Wow, we're learning a lot of jokes here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. We want to get the bottom surface there cooking. You yeah. scrape from the bottom and mix, mix, mix. There you go. Oh, right. wow. Well, okay, now we're going to do the eggs. All right. Once, it, once you get this point, you can put it on the top of the rice. There you go. Very good. Mix yes. it all up. All together, yes. There you go. What time are we bring the beer? Oh, uh, <laughs> we have a Japanese sake over there. Guillermo, let's focus here. All right, let's focus. All right. Garlic. Garlic butter? Yeah, that's a good stuff. Oh, that's the Benihana secret. Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. So there's another trick I, I can show you. What? Flip, flip the rice bowl. Ooh. Oh, wow. Oh, no, I'm going to have an accident. It's easy. No, it's easy. Trust me. One, two, three. Oh, my yeah. God. OK, if I drop it. There you go. See it? Oh. You got it. All right. You got it. <laughs> hey. yeah. Yeah. All right. You. you want one, Jimmy? No, I'm all right. Thank you. <laughs> it's like Japanese tequila. This is Mexican. Okay. Oh, there you go. There you go. Wow. wow. You cut too much meat here. Look at it. Oh, yeah. I'm a little bit drunk, maybe. <laughs> no, too much sake. Is it okay to eat the food while you're cooking it? Do you ever have a little snack? Uh, did you eat it? I'm sure I did that. Still tastes good. Yeah. What did a mushroom say to another mushroom? You are a fun guy. <laughs> sure. Might have to hire some of these writers. Yeah. That's it? it? Looks good, huh? Do you think we're ready now to... Cook for customers, it tastes very good. Yeah, you can cook your friend, maybe. What do you say, chef? No, good job. Very good. Yeah. I mean, about cooking for customers. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Hello, no, ladies. Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you doing? Konnichiwa. 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 I am Chef Jimmy. This is Chef Guillermo. <laughs> We just learned how to do this, so uh, oh. bear with us. Now, whose birthday is it? Teresa. Happy birthday, Happy Teresa. Birthday. I'm going to tell you some. Guillermo's a little drunk, also. A little, so. yeah. Get that rice, yeah. will you, Guillermo? Almost there. How long are you training for? Are we trained for almost 40 minutes? So <laughs> you're in very, very good hands. Why, by the way, why does he have the erect hat? And mine is flaccid. <laughs> Do you guys know what the um, filet mignon said to the uh, uh, T-bone? Nice to meet you. That's uh, these jokes stink. <laughs> How are we yeah, doing? Now we're going to mix this up. Great. Yeah! Hey. <laughs> there you go, birthday girl. Watch this, birthday girl. Oh, oh, oh. Hey! Oh! Oh, no, I'm trying to catch it by hand. Sorry. Yeah. All right, ready? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting pretty good at this, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Extra rice. Oh, I know where I'll put yeah. this rice. Yeah. Hold on. Oh, oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, we'll put some of that rice right in there. All right. There oh, we right. go. All right. All right. You get that. Right. We made a little bit of a mess here. Uh, all right. All right. Let's start putting that on plate. Oh, you want to put it there? Yeah. On top of the rice. I'm, I'm putting them on the rice. That's the new <laughs> chef, Jimmy right. Hanna way. Yes. Yeah. And we've done it. Let's have a toast to the birthday girl. Happy birthday! Be honest, I'd like you to rate us both. Do we have what it takes to be Benny Hanna chefs? Happy guests. 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 Happy gu